Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. We're often hearing about battery constraint being the main reason the EV industry can't grow fast enough. The world has never seen this much demand for batteries. We're talking something ridiculous like 100 times more demand for batteries today than 10 years ago before EVs, or to translate, two orders of magnitude. But that's today, whilst EVs only represent 2% of all auto sales. Well, then we're going to need perhaps 50 times as many batteries to represent 100% of all auto sales. But it doesn't stop there. We're transitioning to renewable energy like solar, and then to complement all the extra solar manufacturing, batteries are required for energy storage. The good thing is about energy storage batteries is the weight and size are not a factor. So instead, you can base the batteries on price and longevity, or battery degradation as it's known. And energy density simply isn't as much of a factor when compared to batteries for EVs. For this reason, battery storage can use LFP batteries, which have an iron-based cathode instead of nickel. These are low cost, but also have a very long life. I think something like 10,000 charges until they're not suitable in a car anymore. But even by then, that's still only about 20% range loss due to degradation. As the storage batteries degrade, they can still be used a lot longer, as range is not a thing. And of course, eventually they can be recycled. But LFP does have advantages in vehicles too, over nickel. You don't need to be as concerned with charging the battery from full and running it until nearly flat as the cathode is more solid than nickel-based. It can also handle faster charging as a result too. LFP is also less prone to catching fire, and thus a much safer alternative to nickel-based cathodes. There are other advantages of LFP too, as the cathode is made from iron phosphate, which is far more abundant and cheaper than nickel. Iron just happens to also be a lot denser, and thus heavier. It also holds less charge, and thus less range for the same weight. This is the disadvantage to LFP, the heavier weight. But if EVs can achieve 300 mile range with LFP, then that should be enough for the majority of consumers, at least when the EV charging infrastructure has matured more. The other issue with LFP is that they're much less power dense in colder climates, but this has been solved by heating up the battery pack. Now the largest battery company, CATL, isn't slowing down. They know how big the LFP market will be and will likely be the largest LFP supplier for some time until we hear more about Tesla's plans on their LFP battery. CATL also investing into sodium ion LFP batteries rather than lithium ion. It's unsure as to whether they'll be applicable for EVs, but they do have some obvious advantages over lithium, what with sodium being that much more abundant and cheaper to source. Now, since Tesla has started producing the standard range model in Shanghai, it is likely that it will eventually also be offered out of Texas and Berlin at some stage too. The good news is that Tesla are in fact using LFP batteries with their standard range Model Y. Elon's original reason for removing the standard range Model Y was that the range is simply not long enough, but he doesn't seem to have any issue offering it in China, Perhaps the standard range is not enough for driving around the US then, maybe. Anyway, Elon says it's possible to get 300 miles of range from LFP batteries eventually. We might hope to see Tesla release their LFP batteries next year, as the patent for LFP batteries in China expires. Great, don't you love patents? The way they hold back innovation. As I've mentioned before, this is a crucial product to Tesla's success, so potentially very exciting, especially if they're able to achieve around 30 kilowatt hours at the pack level. Tesla made a start by only offering the standard range versions from Shanghai and Fremont and sell the long range and performance from Berlin and Texas. Then maybe when the new factories seriously scale up, we'll see the standard range versions offered there too, with Tesla's own LFP batteries, possibly in 2023. It might be about this stage when Fremont will close down for a bit to upgrade the production lines to take advantage of all the new innovation. Fremont Model Ys have the lowest margin. If they can go from about 20% to 35% margin, there will come a time when this makes sense but currently it's important to get as many cars out as possible to secure market share. Because LFPs are significantly lower cost, it means that there is that much less cost of battery in the Model Y standard range, possibly $5,000 less, along with all the other cost savings from lower end features of the standard range. This is why it's a big deal. The standard range Model Y will be Tesla's biggest seller until the Model 2. If Tesla is selling them with LFP, i.e. high margins and no scarce nickel, then they should be able to ramp them up something crazy. Within time, the Model Y standard range could only cost $40,000 or possibly less, then potential tax credits in addition to that, not to mention all the other associated EV cost savings. The LFP battery packs used in the standard ranges are actually structural packs currently, which is partly how Tesla were able to do such a good job with the Model 3 standard range, which means when moving to the new manufacturing techniques, LFP will not benefit from the weight saving of structural batteries, as they're already utilizing it. However, front and rear die casting will reduce the weight further. I'm assuming that Tesla's LFP batteries will be cylindrical. Cylindrical is best for the automotive manufacturer, and thus the car. But prismatic is easier for the battery manufacturers. I also believe Tesla's bottling style manufacturing process 
would only work with cylindrical cells, and thus Prismatic might be much slower in production. I would also hope that we see some progress in energy density from Tesla's own LFP batteries, compared to CATL, perhaps through some of the advances we saw at Battery Day, namely tabless cells and silicon contained in the anodes. So if we eventually do see Teslas reach a range of 300 miles with LFP batteries, then in my opinion, that is ample range. Just think, when was the last time you sat in a car for 300 miles straight? Yeah, it's not often. And within time, the charging networks will improve by orders of magnitude in locations and charging time. Oh, but you don't actually get 300 miles, do you? Because you don't want to charge it full and then empty the battery as it would degrade faster. Well, that's not so much the case with LFP. So the actual usable range is a higher proportion. Due to iron being so much more durable, you can charge the battery to a higher percent and drive it until it's closer to empty without degrading the battery as much. Same with charging. They can accept a higher charging rate with less degradation. Remember, these are the million mile batteries for a reason. I'm not sure if you could get away with LFP in the Cybertruck, and obviously you need high nickel content cathodes in the Roadster and Semi-Truck, but aside from those, LFP really could be used for all the vehicles. I bet not far off about 99% of consumers could handle 300 miles range, particularly if they charged so fast and superchargers were more ubiquitous. Once Tesla's new batteries are all in production, most of the success of the company is going to be riding on how fast they can ramp up battery production every quarter, along with the advances in FSD, but even if feature complete, I wouldn't bank on robotaxi network anytime that soon. As Tesla's battery factories are so much smaller, we're expecting Tesla to ramp up batteries at a faster rate than they ramp up autos. This should eventually mean we hit a pivotal point where Tesla will finally have excess battery supply, or at least excess, to what is required for their autos. This would likely take Tesla's stock to a new price point, as we would finally start to see the neglected energy business grow. For example, it's expected that Giga Berlin will eventually have a capacity of 250 gigawatt hours a year of batteries. That would be around 5 million cars, which we would expect to more than cover the cars. I think it's highly likely that Tesla will build its own battery factory for the Model 2 next to the Model 2 factory, implying that the excess batteries from Berlin may serve for some decent battery storage. And we would expect something similar in Texas. And maybe Tesla will start battery factories independent of car manufacturing, solely for energy storage. That way, they can be delivered to the end user more feasibly. Anyway, I hope that clarifies enough why I think LFP batteries are the future. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.